Right, welcome to the channel guys. Today we're going to be talking about, I'm trying to work out why my uh, four-wheel drive's not working in the 200 series Land Cruiser we've got here. So now for a while it's been, uh, you'll turn the car on and all the four wheel drive lights will flash. And then you turn the car off and then they don't flash anymore. Uh, so just trying to work out why it's doing it. And the other thing as well is that it won't let me engage low range and it won't let me engage the center diff lock. Um, I try to turn them on and these lights, the four wheel drive light and the low light just come flashing on and then they nothing happens. So. We're gonna delve into it and have a bit of a look at why it's not working, how they actually are meant to work, and the differences between the four-wheel drive full-time, four-wheel drive part-time, all that sort of stuff. So yeah, if you wanna hang around and have a look, we can uh, go through and see all the different things about the four-wheel drive selections, especially these newer cars, it's all electronic. The older cars used to have just the lever, easy as, but these ones are all new now, they're all electric. So anyway, let's delve in and have a look. All right, so we started the car and it's made me a liar. The lights haven't come on, but yeah, every probably maybe 10 to 15 times you start the car, these lights will come on and flash. And then all you gotta do is turn the car off and then turn the car back on again and they've disappeared. So there's something not right there uh, in the electrics in the uh, four wheel drive activation circuit. So we'll just check it out. But right now I'll just turn the uh, four wheel drive low range on and we'll show you what it's doing. Got to put in neutral. And you try and get it to engage. Bit of tunes there. And it won't engage, don't matter what you do. Like you try and rock it back and forward and it won't engage, it'll just flash with those lights. Now, if I don't put it into low range, it still comes up with those lights every now and then. So that's what's saying, telling me there's something not right. So. I'll get it back out, put it back into park, and you put it back into high range and nothing happens. So I'll just turn the car off, and then we'll turn the car back on and those lights won't be there. So yeah, that's the uh, short and skinny of it. All right, so in the 200 series we've got here, there's a low four and a high four dial so that turns obviously to low range and it stays in high four all the time and then we've also got all the other fancy stuff in here with uh, crawl control track um, downhill assist and all this sort of fancy stuff this is the center diff lock button here so we'll just run through a few things about what these functions actually do and uh, how that helps you when you're out forward driving all right so a lot of these newer cars uh, come full-time four, well, four wheel drive um and you can tell because there's only a high four and a low four the ones that aren't full-time four-wheel drive will have a h2 which means only the rear wheels are engaged when you're driving along and then when you put it into h4 it means engage the front wheels and the rear wheels and then when you put it into low four it means that you engage low range which is where uh, it changes the gear ratio in the transfer case to allow greater torque to the front and rear, rear wheels while you're doing like rock crawling and things like that. Now the other thing as well I talked about is the center diff lock not working. So what the center diff lock does is that provides the same amount of torque to the front and the rear. So usually it'll be about um, 60 to 70% torque in the rear and 30 to 40% torque in the front. So what the center diff lock does is it locks it so the same amount of torque and power is going to both front and rear uh, wheels. So that's obviously like, yeah, if you're doing a lot of rock crawling or in really like loose gravel things like that and you need to try and um, maintain all four tires are getting good torque at all the time now i think these guy this runs a electronic limited slip diff but you don't quote me on that i'm not too um high up with all that sort of stuff but this is what i do know and yeah we'll get into why this isn't working 
that's just aircon water. Don't worry about that. So anyway, we've crawled under the car here. Um, this is the front of the car. That's the back of the car. And underneath we've got, this is our transfer case. So it's pretty much bolts onto the back of the transmission. And then there's your front drive shaft here, which sends power to the front diff. And then we've got our rear drive shaft there, which sends power back to your rear wheels. So in the transmission transfer case here, sorry, we've got there's all this guarding and stuff like that. So I'll have to rip all that off to show you all the um, components that go into how it selects for low and also how it selects your center diff lock. Now this is just a dampener thing, I think. It's just Toyota's, I don't know, way of adding a bit more weight to your car. Just a solid, that's a good half kilo there. Anyway. So the cover's off now, and this is our modulation device, which uh, pushes, there's two rods that push the uh, engaged low range and center diff lock. Um, as you can see, there's a bit of a bit of an oil leak there coming out of that rear seal, but we'll just pretend we won't see that. Now, these have, you can't just unbolt these and pull them out because they've got two shafts that go through into the transfer case that have got clips on the back of them. So to actually change this whole unit out, you'll have to pull the transfer out. And I don't want to do that. And I'm in a driveway. So what we're going to do is just going to disconnect these plugs and we're going to just oh, try and disconnect it. Anyway, I'll disconnect that. And then we can take these covers off and there's actually an electric servo motor in there which uh, rotates and that moves the um, the shafts that go in to the transfer in and out. So we'll just disconnect these plugs and I'll show you what I mean. Alright, so this is the uh, um, part number for that whole actuator assembly. Um, now, I managed to get one of these through an acquaintance, I'll say. But they are very expensive, they're about $1,500 to $2,000 for these things. So. Got to make sure that that's actually what's wrong with your car before you do this, but like I say, I'm not doing the whole thing. There we go. So these are the two shafts that go into your transfer case, and then they bolt to the selectors inside the transfer case, which change it from high four to low four and engage the send diff lock. So you can see there that yeah, there's, it's a fair bit of work to pull that out. You don't just you can't just slide it out. They've got to be they're bolted in and things like that. So not really a on the driveway job, but what I'm what I think it is is the fact that these inside here there's a servo motor which moves these rods in and out to select. So and I think something wrong in here. So we'll uh, open up the old one, have a bit of a look inside, and we'll see what's wrong. Yep, there's the problem. All right, so in here, that's the sh that's what that shaft is attached to, and I'll just flip the camera over and show you what uh, what we've found. Ew! 
whole lot of rust. Now you gotta be careful when you pull these out because there are lots of little, uh, like this is a timed cam. And if this bit falls out, you're gonna be in a bit of struggle because there's a lot of, there's yeah, there's a timed unit inside there. So be very careful when you're pulling this out because if it does fall out, you're gonna, it's gonna take you forever to time, line everything up again. So just pull it out gently and that's it. I'm not gonna lie to you, I have already had this out. Um, I had it out about six months ago when this problem first started and we were actually in Lorella Springs and we, that's when the problem first came around and I was like, what's going on here? I'll have a bit of a look. I've pulled this cover off and a fair bit of water came out. And as you know, water and electrics don't mix. So there is a seal on there, but obviously that seal wasn't good enough and we've been through a fair few amount of river crossings and yeah, she's filled up with water. So that's why that's rusted out. So that's why I've ordered that part. Um, and then Obviously, I'm not going to be able to do it properly, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to change that actuator over or that um, the electric motor over and just see if that fixes the problem. All right, now because I don't want all the bits of that to fall out, I'm just going to turn it upside down before I take it off. There we go, a lot nicer. And there's a part number on that motor actually, electric motor. So if you've just got a motor issue, you might be able to just change it out. It's just a little screw holding it in, welded on, oh welded, soldered on pins on the end. It's just a 12 volt electric motor. But anyway, I'll uh, pop this in. Hopefully it's all in the lines. Looks like it's all lined up. We'll see if that fixes it. All right, so side by side, I've actually just rotated this around a little bit because the uh, they weren't lined up. You can see there's a there's a bit of grease on the end of here, but you see there's a dash there, and I've lined it up with that pin there, so because that's the same as what this one is here. So I pretty much just did it by hand. And that just rotates it around so you can clock it so it's exactly the same as the one you pulled out because originally this was a bit further up because these they just move on their own because they're not engaged to anything but anyway moral of the story is make the new one look like the old one make sure it's all lined up in the same spot a little bit of a difference cooked and that's seized i can't even move that with my fingers whereas this one you can really rotate it so that says to me that this motor is seized and obviously you can tell because it's chock full of rust so you can see there is an o-ring here that goes around but obviously it didn't hold up too well so I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put a fair bit of um we'll put a bit of grease on there a bit of rubber grease and hopefully that acts as a good seal as well Well, that felt too easy. I'm even gonna put the new screws in just to make it look that bit, bit extra special. All right, so I've uh, taken the top one off as well, and it's just as bad. So it's locked up, and it's pretty much covered in, well, just years of abuse. Now, we just had to be careful because it was facing upwards when I lifted it off. All the guts wanted to stay behind, so you got to be careful. I just got a screwdriver in there and held it in place while I pulled it off. That sounds ordinary, but anyway, let's get the other one off the new one and chuck it in. All right, new one out. 
let's match them up. So just rotate this around until it's in the same position as that. There's no distinguishing marks on this, but I'm just going by the center line onto that part there. I might see a little bit more. Even the cog inside at the back there. To try and line up with a, a mark. So we'll try that. I reckon that's about spot on. We'll chuck it in and see how we go. All right, both new control panel module thingo movie the things in and out things are fit in. Plug back in, let's fire it up, see if it works. Now on the fall dry or on the center diff lock, there's actually a limit switch in here as well, which can also fail. So if you if everything seems pretty good in here, this motor is not seized like mine is. That still spins freely. It could be this limit switch is broken. So you can just put a uh, yeah, multimeter across here to check resistance and continuity and see if that's actually switching properly. But anyway, there's a trick here as well um, as to why these sometimes fail if they're not um, full of water like that. Another thing, if you pull this out, you'll notice there's a bit of a circuitry there. And if I can get it, those three dots you can see, so that's where the contacts are, and there's three contacts on the back here one two three now if they just sit so long because you're not engaging four-wheel drive that'll just sit in there and it will just vibrate and it will just slowly um, corrode pretty much and you'll get a bad contact so you can see there they've actually got a bit, little bit of burns as if they've been just sitting for too long now in saying that we use this a fair bit when we were traveling so we did engage low range a fair bit um, but obviously this isn't a water egress problem not the contacts burning out but the whole idea if you cycle through your four wheel drive even in the driveway or things like that is it'll move these and keep them moving and just make sure they're not just sitting there um yeah rusting away on that certain spot burning the contacts out so yeah good idea just to engage that four wheel drive low center diff lock even if you're just in the driveway go back and forth a little bit then go carry on your day off to work dropping the kids off school doing whatever you got to do All right, there we have it, all done and dusted. So that went all right. The only issue, there was a slight um, timing error in one of those um, those sprockets there. So I had to pull it back out and just move it around one tooth. So nothing too major. That's why the lights were coming up on the dash. But anyway, now she's all good. Selects everything all perfectly fine. Now, just a bit of word of warning. This is fairly intricate sort of stuff. Um, if you know there's things fall out and you don't know the alignment, it's gonna take you forever to get it sorted. So. Just a word of warning, if you're not confident doing, don't do it, take it somewhere else and get them to do it. Let them muck around with it. But yeah, it's, it is a pain in the butt if it doesn't get done right. Um, anyway, here's a few tips to help you out. Um, another thing is if you don't use your four wheel drive or your low range send diff lock very often, if it's just a you know everyday car, you don't really go take it out or you only take it out once a year for four wheel driving, Make sure once a month or every couple of weeks in your driveway, just put it into low range, put it in your diff lock, go back and forward a little bit just to, to move that around. Otherwise, that'll seize up. There's three contacts on there, um, and if they just sit in the same spot all the time, they'll just they'll corrode and rust out, and then they won't work, won't give a good signal, and you'll start getting these issues. So just a bit of a, a tip to, yeah, just make sure you just engage in that. You don't have to go forward drive and just do it in your driveway, on and off, on and off, a few times just to get that moving, get the grease moving around. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that video. Hope it was helpful. Um, if not, sorry, but <laughs> that's all it is. Anyway, we'll see you next time. And uh, yeah, take care. Safe travels.